Your sister's jaw dropped, looking betrayed as mom. I don't have any loyalty for you, Lizzie. You're an like you're not an you're not an asshole, but I don't like you at all. Your character is not nice. Welcome back to commentary. I am Ari and we are playing some more Our Life. Let's see what Cove and I are up to today. Alright, uh, let's do this real quick. Okay, so Fireflies is one I wanted to do that last. So grown up or long day? Let's say grown up. One sweltering summer day, you were in your living room with Cove, listening to the sounds of the birds shattering outside the window while you lay across the rug on the floor. Cove's dad had dropped him off earlier, and your moms had left the two of you, along with Lizzie, to play amongst yourselves. Oh no. It had been too hot, I mean not about Cove, but about Lizzie. <laughs> it had been too hot to go outside in the afternoon, at least according to mommy, so your sister was starting to get impatient, waiting for a golf class that evening. The three of you had had trouble to find something fun to do. The beach and the playground were off limits, and you felt that it was too warm for anything uh, playing with your fuzzy toy animals. Then suddenly a light came to Lizzie's big brown eyes and her smile spread wide across her face. Having an idea gave her a new wave of energy. Since we're stuck inside, we should be adults. They don't play outdoors anyways. They're always inside and telling everybody they're too busy to play. Why? Duh! I said why, and it will be fun, duh! What do they do inside that we don't, besides use the phone a lot? Exuding a small huff, Lizzie decides to ignore Cove. What do you think? What do you want to do? Mm. I bet we could come up with something else. But that's what I'm going to do, and it's not as fun uh, when I play pretend adults by myself. Do you do that a lot? What's it to you? Looking at Lizzie, it seemed Ko felt he could understand where she, uh, where she was coming from, and he sighed. Do you really not want to play, Ari? It was clear he wanted some way out, but still felt guilty about it. Okay, okay, I'll stay. Actually, I don't want to play with my sister at all. I'll try, but that sounds boring. Mm. I keep hesitating, how about that? Because that's actually how I feel right, feel right now. You look down at your hands, still unsure. Apparently tired of waiting for you to make up your mind, Lizzie sighed. Fine, go play over there, Ari. You flinched from her raised voice. It definitely wouldn't be fun to join now. Me and Cove will do it ourselves, it's decided. He looked back at you regretfully. I guess. <laughs> now, go on. Nodding goodbye to the two of them, you trailed off to find something else to do. Like you promised, Cove stayed put with Lizzie for the next couple of hours while you... Oh no, I don't wanna... I don't wanna be left out. <laughs> I guess. I guess so. I guess you wanted to play with her. <sighs> okay, I stay. I hope this is as fun as you're promising it will be. Lizzie looked at you, deadly serious. It's the most exciting idea I've had all week. Because I didn't get that. Like I understood it completely wrong. I thought it was like that. Cove wanted to ditch, and I wanted to ditch. <laughs> well, I guess whatever. Satisfied that neither of you were about to bail on her, Lizzie thought over her options while you watched. After a few seconds, she clapped her hands together and beamed, apparently having settled on something without asking either of you. Okay. I'm gonna be a professional golfer. Ari, you and Cove can be... A beach volleyball player, a gymnast or a tennis player. Mm. Why can't we pick what we want? Because I have a fun idea, that's why. And we have to play sports as adults? Yep. But there's other kinds of sports too. Right? It isn't the same. What do you think, Ari? 
Don't those choices sound super cool? You wanna be there, huh? Actually, let me check the log. Which ones were? It was tennis, volleyball, gymnast, tennis. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe not. Wait, isn't there anything else we can be? That's the thing. Isn't there anything else we can be? Lily stomped a, f uh, a foot on the ground. Nope, come on, just decide already. Knowing Lizzie wouldn't let us go anytime soon, you sighed. Go was not impressed with Lizzie's attitude, though he didn't bother m um, talking more about it for now. You thought over the list of possibilities. Beach, volleyball, gymnastics or tennis. Of all of them, you'd prefer to play... None of them, actually. I mean... Hmm. I guess beach volleyball? If you couldn't spend the afternoon at the beach for real, then you might as well pretend you were there. You, couldn't ev uh, you could even wear your swimsuit to make it seem more realistic. Although Lizzie probably wouldn't let you run off to do that now that she had you here. Yes, that was clearly the top option. Okay, I'm gonna be the volleyball player. All right. What about you, Cove? I'll have a volleyball team too. Lily threw her hands in the air, making an annoyed sound. You guys can't be the same thing. That's not how it works. He mm. didn't say that. The rule was picking from the list. You can't keep adding more. Lily looked at the two of you, then shook her head, resigned to losing this battle, but not the war. Fine, you both be volleyball players, but you're not on. But you're on the same team because there's only one. Lizzie's ponytail bobbed when she proudly stretched her arms wide. The Olympic team. What? We're Olympic athletes, just compete uh, who just competed in the Olympics. Cove didn't seem all that impressed with the announcement. He made a face and adjusted the glasses on his nose. That's really specific. Rude. Uh, that's what makes it fun, anyway. Lizzie marched back and forth in front of the both of you, getting lost in her own imagination. I won all gold medals, and people are calling me the next Mickey White. Um, who's that? Lizzie uh, stopped on the spot and turned to him, her brown eyes shining with impatience. It doesn't matter if you don't know who she is, it's a gold thing. You guys won medals too. Your team placed at silver. It's more real if we're not all first place. Hey, we can do better than silver. He pouted at Lizzie, unhappy with the decision. I was right. Sorry. Lots of people lose at the Olympics. Dems the brakes. <laughs> then you're the one who did, not me. <laughs> Cove's getting competi competitious. Wait, com competitive. Sorry. Fetishes, wow. I am inventing new words. I'm the next Shakespeare. Lizzie looked taken aback by Cove's declaration, as though the thought of her losing was completely absurd. No way! It wouldn't make sense. I'm already practicing my golf game. She took a golfing stance and to make her point, pretending to swing her uh, club and hit an invisible ball. So what kind of house do you want to live in? Cove hadn't changed his mind about winning, but thinking about where he ha he'd live as an adult appealed to him, apparently, because he looked back at Lizzie with some of the anger fading. I'm going to live on the beach. Lizzie made a face at him, poking out her tongue. That's kind of boring, we already have that. No, not like the normal houses uh, here on the street. On it, right on the sand, by the water. Just like that, all the tension was back. You hadn't even had a chance to choose where you would want to live. That's not very fun or smart, Cove. You can't live on a bunch of sand and shells. But I want to, and I will. Cove narrowed his eyes at Lizzie, even though he stood half a head taller than him. She stood half a head taller than him. You didn't want to, uh, You didn't give out a list of things to pick from this time, so I'm picking that. Why are we even playing pretend if we can't imagine anything? Jeez! Jeez, well, I'm gonna live in a mansion far away from here and far away from you. 
one with a big in one with an indoor pool and a place to practice my award-winning golfing. It's not fair. How come you were yelling at mine about where your uh, when your idea is even more impossible? Lizzie's face flushed red, her hands balling into fists at her sides. It's not impossible, and it's better than yours. Disagreements always seemed to crop up when the two of them were together, and you always felt like you were stuck in the middle. But when it came to the topic at hand, this time you thought... Um... So first of all, being on the beach is cooler, definitely. And also, Cove is right. Like he's making up the, she's just making up the rules. It's not fun. Cove's idea is good. You shouldn't say yours is the right one, the only right one. No one asks your opinion. He smiled slightly over the agreement, then turned to Lizzie with bolstered confidence. You can swim whenever you want if you live on the beach. We can still swim any time we want from where we live now. Being a little closer doesn't mean anything. Says you. The two of them scowled at each other. You're being so unreasonable. You... you... I don't get what you want. This game doesn't make sense. Ugh. It does. You have to be realistic. I said that. But you're not. You had no idea what to do to make them stop at this point. It seemed like the two of them would just keep working each other up as long as they could. Nothing you said so far had kept them from being mad. Thankfully, like a greeting and uh, like a greeting angel car card angel wait, like a greeting card angel, whatever that means. Mom walked into the room. Lizzie rushed o uh, rushed to her, hanging onto the hem of her shirt and poking out her tongue at Cove. Lizzie. Oh no. Lizzie, Ari, it's time to get ready to go. You alright with that? Sorry, you have to leave already, Cove. Their mom said um, they'll walk you home so you won't be left in the cold. Wait, what? Their mommy. Oh, their mommy said, so like the other mom, okay. Said she'll walk you home. Cove was still glaring at Lizzie, his face flushed red with anger. I can go by myself. But. Bye. Bye, Ari. There was still a harsh edge of, uh, to the brief farewell, but you knew it wasn't you that he was mad at. Without giving Mom a chance to stop him, Cove stood up and stalked out of the room, shoulders drawn tight. Huh? Okay. Worried, Mom turned to, uh, to look down at you and Lizzie. You two were playing nice with your new friend, weren't you? You told the truth. We were playing pretend and things got intense. They were like cats and dogs. Your sister's jaw dropped, looking betrayed as mom. I don't have any loyalty for you, Lizzie. You're an like you're not an you're not an asshole, but I don't like you at all. Your character is not nice. Um Your sister's jaw dropped, looking betrayed as mom put both hands on her hips. Elizabeth! I told you to be kind to him. He's having a hard time right now. Lily's mouth closed back up and replaced by a tiny frown. I know, I tried, but he was... You didn't try. That's enough. No buts. We both know you can show someone a great time when you put your mind to it. We're going to apologize to Cove and his dad over the phone when he gets home from work tonight. Lizzie hung her head, dragging a foot across the ground in front of her. <sighs> okay, mom. Good girl. You caught pieces of Lizzie sulking uh, to herself about how it was his fault too, but it was over. Alright, we better get a move on. Let's go! Let's go kids! Noelani, where did you leave the car keys? Mom hustled you out the door and you noticed during the car ride to golf practice that Lizzie was quieter than usual. She was usually the first one to request which music to listen to in the car, but she didn't say anything. Your parents noticed she wasn't in a mood to be bothered. They gave her space and mommy just asked you what you'd like to listen to. Um... You know what, I want to cheer her up though. I don't want her to be in a bad mood when she likes to go golfing and she's on the way there. Uh, you chose a song you knew Lizzie liked. Maybe that would cheer her up. 
You were happy to see it brightened her up right away, and she started singing along with you. Soon enough, her bad mood was a thing of the past. I mean, I want her to grow. I don't want her to, like, like grow as a person, not grow a grudge, right? When the car ride was over, you spent the twilight hour watching Lizzie hit things with other girls her age. <laughs> that sounds wrong. <laughs> you didn't know much about golf, but you could tell she really liked it. So you sat with your moms and tried to puzzle it out. It was nice sitting. It was nice sitting outside after being cooped up in the house all day. And you stretched uh, out your legs to get the last few minutes of sun warm, of sun warm on your skin. When the sun was finally out of sight, dripping behind the horizon, you all got ready to leave. Instead of going straight home, your moms took the family out to dinner. You went to a restaurant you had all been going to ever since you could remember. And the whole afternoon had been a bunch of shouting uh, you hadn't been able to stop. But you could kind of tell that this all has helped Lizzie to be less angry. Okay. The car ride home was quiet with only the radio providing escape from silence. Lizzie had been in better spirits now, but the closer you got to your neighborhood, the more she wiggled in her seat and frowned out the window. She knew what was coming when you all got back home. Clearly, she was dreading it. Soon enough, Mom was turning onto your, sh uh, onto your street, then reversing, in reversing into the driveway. Once she cut the uh, ignition, it was dead silent. No one spoke, only unbuckled their seatbelts and opened their doors. Lizzie was the last one out. Once everyone was inside and done taking off their shoes, she propped her hands on her hips. So. Now then. Mr. Holden's car is in the driveway, so he should be back home from work. That's good news, isn't it, Elizabeth? You and Cove can hash things out before the day's good. done. Lizzie didn't complain or put up a fight. Her, hair, her head buckled so she didn't have to meet anyone's eyes. She nodded once. Good, let's move this to the kitchen. Mom went over the house phone and the rest of you followed and the rest of you followed behind her. Mommy put up a gentle hand on Lizzie's shoulder as they walked side by side. You watched them from the back. This was only happening because you told on Lizzie. I don't regret it. Um Yeah, I didn't like doing it, but I had to. Yeah, she was nasty. It was her fault for doing so in the first place. You hadn't done anything wrong by telling the truth. It wasn't like Lizzie was going to say it on her own. The four, uh, four of you stood around the kitchen in a lopsided square. Uh, all eyes were on Lizzie, who kept her gaze on her feet. You remember the number for Cove's house, don't you, honey? Lizzie jerked her head in, an, in, another, in another nod, sullen. Without further prompting, she stepped forward and she began to dial. Mom reached over and pressed the button on the base. Suddenly, you could hear the phone ringing. She turned on the speaker. The phone rang a couple of times, then stopped. Mr. Holden's warm voice came through the other end. Evening, Holden residence. Lizzie looked over at Mommy, unsure. She nodded encouragingly. Um... Mr. Holden, it's um Lizzie. Can I talk to Cove? Absolutely. Lizzie, video game girl, what a surprise! But of course, you can say hey to the boy. He sounded cheery as usual, though definitely meant it when he said it was a surprise. You thought hard, and you were sure that your sister had never called Cove's house before. Mom spoke up before Mr. Holden and Lizzie could say anything more. Her arms were crossed over her chest, chest her lips pursed. Hi Cliff, Noelani, Ari and I are here too. Good evening, we're sorry to bother you so late. Hi Mr. Holden. <laughs> the gang's all here, huh? Is something the matter? His voice grew a bit concerned. Mommy was quick to reassure him. Mm. No, well, yes, but it's okay, it's going to be okay. Lizzie and Cove got into a bit of a fight today. We were hoping that the two of them could talk and make up. Is this a good time for you and Cove? What? A fight? Cove didn't tell me anything about that when I came home. 
It does explain the funk he's been in tonight. He chuckled lightly, despite that it didn't seem like he really thought it was funny. Anyway, it's good you didn't catch us at a bad time. I could I go grab him for you. There was some shuffling on the other hand. He must have gone far because you could still he must not have gone far because you could still hear him calling out. Cove, there's someone on the phone for you. After a bit of silence, there was more ruffled, uh, muffled talking from Cove's dad. Come on, bud. Lizzie's called so she, uh, just so she could talk to you. Are you sure? Ari's on the other end listening too. Don't you want to say hi? It took a bit of back and forth, though the conversation seemed one-sided since you couldn't hear Cove completely. Uh, properly, sorry. Eventually, Cove took the phone from his dad. Um, it's Lizzie. Yeah, I know. Dad told me. Cove's tone was defensive. Lizzie turned to mom, scowling. One stern look from her, though, Lizzie turned and Lizzie turned away. Sorry. I just called to say I'm sorry. Not for playing nice with you today. <laughs> for not playing nice with you today. I won't do it again. Lizzie's eyes were downcast. Her voice low, but this is a lesson she has to learn. You could tell uh, she felt uncomfortable apologizing to Cove in front of everyone. She was still being genuine about feeling bad. Cove must have realized that too, because he sighed quietly. Mm. Me and Ari should get gold too. That's right, Lizzie had uh, kept denying you two what you deserved. Lizzie was momentarily stunned, silent by the demand. She probably forgot that had even happened already. Alright. We all win gold. Okay, I guess I'm sorry too. A sense of relief, relief washed over everyone at his acceptance of the apology. Mom uncrossed her arms while Mommy's shoulders relaxed. Lizzie's eyebrows raised up. He wondered if she thought that he'd refuse her apology. Dad, can I get off the phone now? You couldn't see him, but it was obvious that Cole felt awkward about the situation. He had come off... Co uh, he had come off uncomfortable the entire time, really. Yeah. Yeah, you can go back to your room if you want. Be sure to say goodbye first, though. Um, bye, Lizzie. Bye. Bye. Bye, Ari. He perked up at the mentioning of your name. He smiled, even if he couldn't see it. Bye, Cove. With that said, Cove must have handed the phone to his dad and left, since Mr. Holden spoke up. That's a relief. Well, all ends well. Well, all's well that ends well, as they say. Thanks for arranging this. I'm sure he appreciates it. As Mom replied, Lizzie tugged on Mommy's hand to catch her attention. Can I go now, too? Good job. Sure, sweetie. Thank you very much for apologizing to Cove. Mom flashed a brief smile at Lizzie and nodded her in agreement. Given permission to leave, Lizzie scurried off towards the stairs. She seemed to be feeling much better with the incident behind her. See, it was worth it. Mom and Mommy returned to the phone, taking it off the speaker. They continued talking to Mr. Holden. You couldn't tell, tell what it was about. I'm kind of feeling reluctant, by the way, about the last episode we had. Well, maybe I'm gonna talk about that at the end. <clears throat> you were glad that was the end of it all. Lizzie and Cove might not get along. And probably still won't, but they weren't mad at each other anymore. Mom and Mommy weren't upset either. Everything was fi finally back to normal. With that thought, you retreated to your own room with a spring in your step. That's nice. So now, um, about the sandcastle incident. Uh, at the end, I'm kind of feeling maybe, maybe we should have told him about the money thing because it's like really interesting to see. How, it, how his father is still trying to handle it with money. Uh, but I don't know, I don't know. Um, yeah. I'm feeling torn about it, but I hope I can fix it with the DLC stuff, maybe. I think Cove is going through a hard time. It's not just Lizzie that shows signs of being nasty, actually. I have noticed that Cove is also showing signs of uh, nasty traits. And I think we should... Uh, nip that in the bud before they actually come out uh, but yeah 
that's just what I wanted to say. I just noticed that he, he can probably also become nasty if we don't pay attention to like how we guide them, I guess. So far I've been really um, emotional and like forgiving to him, I guess, and I've been playing by uh, basically his whims a lot, but maybe I should not always do that. I will, I will try to keep this in mind and we will see how it goes when we play the long day next. And then I'm gonna play all the DSCs by myself and give you an update before we go into Fireflies. Alright, that's it from me. I hope you had fun and I will see you in another episode. Until then, bye!